Okay, let's learn how to do pattern matching with Burroughs Wheeler Transport. Let me first summarize what we learned about pattern matching with suffix tree. The runtime is equal to O of length of the tags plus total length of all patterns. Memory is, in the best implementation known today, is 20 times length of the tags, which is high for large strings like human genome, 3 billion nucleotide long. So the question we will try to address in this lesson is, can we use Burroughs Wheeler Transform to design a more memory efficient linear time algorithm for multiply pattern matching? So let's see how we can do this. Let's search for Anna in Panama Bananas. Well, we we'll definitely start by noticing that there are six rows that start from letter A. But when we look, and uh, please notice also that we are currently matching the last le symbol in Anna rather than the first one. This will be important. So there are six rows starting from A, but only three of them are ending in N, what we need, because we are looking for ma matching the last two symbols now of Anna, which is NA. So we narrow attention to this three symbols, and using the first last property, we can figure out where these three ends hide in the first column of our burroughs wheeler matrix. Here, here, and here. After we found uh, where they appear in the first column, we know where Na appears in the, uh, in the string, and we actually found three matches of Na. This is the last two symbols in Anna. Let's now try to match the first symbol in Anna, and we know where to look for this first symbol. We look for them correspondingly in the last uh, columns of these three strings. And after we found A in these three rows, then using again the uh, first last property, we find where these three occurrences of Anna appears at the beginning of our cyclic rotation. As a result, we found three matches of Anna. Let me specify some details of the algorithm that we just discussed. We will use two pointers, top and bottom, that specify the range of positions in the burroughs wheeler matrix that we are interested in. In the beginning, top equal to zero, and bottom equal to 13 to cover all positions in the text. At the next iteration, the range of position we are interested in is narrowed to all position where A appears in the first call. Then, what do we do afterwards? We are looking for the next symbol, which is N in Anna, and we are looking for the first occurrence of this symbol in the last column among positions from top to bottom, among rows from top to bottom. And likewise, afterwards, we are looking for the last occurrence of this symbol. As soon as we found the first and last occurrence of this symbol, in this case n, the first last property will tell us where these n's and all n's in between are hiding in the first column. As a result, the pointers uh, top and bottom equal to 1 and 6 are changing into 9 and 11, we narrowed the search. And then we continue further, and that's how we find the positions of Anna in uh, the text. The algorithm that I just described translates in the following BW matching pseudocode. And you can see lines in green describe what we have been doing with these top and bottom pointers. Note that we are using last to first array and given a symbol at position index in last column, last to first index define the position of this symbol in the first column. So it's implement first to last property. It looks like now, finally, we are done. We have a very fast pattern matching algorithm based on Burroughs Wheeler transform and it has good memory footprint. The only problem, though, is that BW matching is very slow. 
it analyzes every symbol from top to bottom in the last column in each step. Well, what should we do? The trick here is to introduce the count array. And the count array describes the number of occurrences of a given symbol in the first i position of the last column. This slide shows the count array, and armed with the count array, we can design a better version of BW matching by substituting four green lines that we discussed before by two green lines that are using the count array. And as you can see, we don't need anymore to explore every symbol between uh, top and bottom indices in the last column. If you are wondering about the details of transformation in, uh, from the previous four lines into uh, two lines using the count uh, array, check our Coursera course or uh, get details from our book that uh, describes this transformation. So it looks like finally, finally, after all these complications, they are done. But there is still one question we fail to answer. Where are the matches that we found? Where do they appear in the text?